Now we are going to turn to the first segment of the event entitled Exploring the Digital Innovation Shaping Wildlife Conservation Today. This year, we are so honored to welcome a new partner, Wild Labs, which is a global community that unites conservation technology users and makers. <laughs> We look forward to learning about exciting innovations and inventions shaping wildlife conservation in our current digital age. And I now I leave you with Stephanie O'Donnell, Wildlife's Executive Manager. Please, Stephanie, take the floor. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie O'Donnell. I'm the Executive Manager of Wild Labs. And this is we're a global community for conservation technology, and we have 8,500 members around the world who use our online platform and programs to discover information and best practice, identify shared challenges, find collaborators, and access resources. Our community is the go-to place for conservation technology. So if you're in, interested in conservation tech, you should head to wildlabs.net and uh, find your place. Now, in this role, I work with conservationists every day, and I hear about the challenges they face accessing and using technology. And I'm going to talk about the innovation needs we hear for coming from our community. But before I get there, I wanted to start with the question, what is conservation technology? So every year for World Wildlife Day, we ask our community to share photos of how they use <coughs> tech in the field or lab to post it to social media and tell us about how tech is helping support their conservation work. And over the last eight years, we have had thousands of photos and videos shared from across the planet. So when I ask what is conservation technology, I imagine some of the technologies on display here are what immediately jump to mind. Drones, biologgers, camera traps, bioacoustic devices. But these hardware devices are just one part of how technology is being used in conservation. And rather than thinking about technology, it might be helpful to think about data. We use technology to collect, manage, and analyze data so that we can make better decisions. And so when we're thinking about how to use technology in conservation, the questions we ask are, you know, what data do you need? How will you collect it? Who needs to see this, this data? And how are you going to store it? How will you analyze it? And finally, how will you use it to inform your decision making? And through work like our state of conservation technology research, we help our community identify shared innovation priorities. And when asked, our community talks about needing innovation in all three of these areas. So we have hardware and engineering challenges around designing smaller sensors, lengthening battery life, lowering cost, and integrating different sensors so that we get more, a more complete picture of environments or animal behavior. We also need improvements in software and data infrastructure which also includes you know, improving user interfaces. Um, and the ultimate goal is to make it easier to get data from the field, from the sensors, to where it needs to go, and to also ensure that the people who are working in different areas and with different technical skill sets are better able to access and work with data. And finally, we're also, we also need and, and are seeing innovations around traditional quantitative ecology, like statistics, statistical analyses and the growing applications of AI and conservation. And Sarah Beery, to my, to my right here, is going to be talking um, about AI uh, in conservation in just a second. Um, but, you know, when we have these conversations with our members about how they need technology to improve, while they talk about these sort of specific, te specific technical challenges, like, you know, I need longer battery life or a smaller sensor, what we find is actually they very quickly jump to talking about um, these big picture systemic challenges facing our sector as, as a whole. Like the technical challenges are important, but actually where, where, where we see the most interest is these big challenges. And they ask questions like, you know, how do we work together to an, an attempt ambitious goals like the large scale tracking of many animals? How do we build accessible, user friendly, interoperable tools? How do we build local technical knowledge? Um, and what standards do we need? And how do we achieve global data sharing and archiving? These are big challenges, and they're beyond the scope of a single project or a single organization. And this is truly where we need the investment and the innovation to move um, our field forward. And so when we think about innovation, I think we think about things that are new, a better, cutting edge, and of activities like hackathons or grand challenges. 
But if you can take one thing away from my talk today, it's this. These specific technology innovations are just one part of what we need to unlock the full potential of technology to address the challenges facing our planet. Innovators are just one part of a complex system. And this is, how I, this is how I envisage our community. We have our adopters, who are the conservationists working directly on conservation challenges. They need access to better tools and training. The innovators respond to challenges adopters are facing and come up with new tech innovations that answer them. But critically, we need the people and organizations working in the scaling and usability space to take these innovations and transform them, transform them into accessible and maintained tool that adopters can trust and they can easily use. And finally, we need all of these enabling partners who are critical for ensuring the resources are available and directed to all parts of the system. And this is what it looks like in practice. And it, I'll note it's not exhaustive. Um, these are just some of the partners work, we're working with. And with, with Wild Labs, our goal is to help all parts of this system to be able to find each other, to be able to talk the same language and effectively collaborate at a global level and at a local level. And this map is one of my greatest sources of optimism as well, and I think it matches what Peter was talking about. We are welcoming so many new people and partners from other sectors into this space. Um, and this would have been a vastly, empty vastly more empty diagram just a few years ago. And so while all you can see here are logos, behind each one of them are real people engineers, biologists, designers, communicators, developers, people coming from a huge array of backgrounds. And through technology, each person has found an important role to play in conservation. We cannot meet the challenges ahead of us alone. We must work with other sectors, and technology is a powerful pathway to build bridges to do this. And so it is my pleasure to introduce you to some of these people in our community and share their work showcased in, in what they've entered into the World Wildlife Day Tech for Wildlife Photo Challenge. Please enjoy. Thank you. 